the Haram al Sharif is a very important site for Muslims. It's the third most holy site after Mecca and Medina. And it was also the site of the uh, temple which Solomon built uh, 3,000 years ago. And it was probably the site upon which Abraham offered Isaac or Ishmael, depending on whether you're Jewish or Muslim. But it's a very important site. Um, Orthodox Jews pray every day for the rebuilding of the temple and they are convinced the temple has got to be rebuilt so that they can offer atonement for their sin and uh, the problem is for uh, the Jewish authorities the religious authorities is they don't know precisely where the temple was when it was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70 they literally destroyed every uh, semblance of its presence there so 2,000 years later, uh, there are four alternative sites for the temple in Jerusalem. Only one of them is uh, the same location as the uh, Dome of the Rock. Uh, but you will find uh, the Temple Mount Faithful, which is an extremist Jewish group, and other uh, uh, religious groups within Judaism are committed to destroying the Dome of the Rock and rebuilding the Jewish Temple. There have been over 50 attempts to destroy the Dome of the Rock since 1948 by Jewish extremists and even Christian extremists. Um, Ariel Sharon uh, made his provocative visit in the year 2000 with a thousand armed troops to assert his right as a Jewish citizen to visit the, the Dome of the Rock, the Haram al-Sharif, uh, and it kick-started the Second Intifada. It brought down Barak's government. So it's a very volatile location. The Israeli High Court, Supreme Court, has given permission for the Temple Mount Faithful to hold a celebration on the Haram al-Sharif. Uh, uh, it's a spe very sp a special festival uh, that within the Jewish uh, uh, calendar where they mark the destruction of the Temple. The Temple Mount Faithful seek to take an articulated lorry with three and a half ton stone foundation stones and try and take it. Uh, to uh, the Temple Mount, the Haram al-Sharif, and every year the, uh, the police who control the Haram al-Sharif refuse to let them in. But they attempt to, to get, gain access, destroy the dome, and rebuild the temple. The tragedy for me as a Christian is that there are Christian groups who believe that this is God's will, and therefore they're supporting that movement, funding it. Hebron, for example, you hear about the Jewish settlement in the middle of Hebron, and you hear about a yeshiva. Yeshiva is Hebrew for school. Uh, you think, well, a school is for children. No, the yeshiva in Hebron is training priests, Jewish priests. What for? The temple in Jerusalem. So they're training priests for the day when they will rebuild the temple and start animal sacrifices again. That's what they're doing in Hebron. They're preparing for that day. That's why they're extremists. That's why they are... Uh, uh, causing so much uh, trouble in Hebron today. To practice? They're, they're to learning practice to practice the role of being priests, yes. And does, that, does that training include learning how to sacrifice? Pardon me? The role includes learning how to sacrifice animals? Yes, because that's what the priests did every day. In the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, the role of a priest uh, was everyone would bring, a, bring an animal, uh, its throat would be slit, uh, the blood would be shed, the animal would be killed uh, as a cover, as a substitute from, for my sin. That was what was... Uh, so hundreds, thousands of animals were sacrificed on a daily basis in the temple uh, to make atonement for sin. And it's that's what they want to re in, uh, restart. One of the dilemmas which the ultra-Orthodox have is that in order to offer sacrifices to make atonement for our sin, you must have a, a perfect, uh, holy place. The altar, the high priest, the priests, uh, the temple has, have to be made sacred, have to be made holy before they can be used uh, to take away unholiness, sin. And what's needed is the ashes of a red heifer to be sprinkled with water to purify the altar, 
purify the high priest. And the problem for the ultra-Orthodox is they don't have ashes of a red heifer. A red heifer is a very rare animal, perfectly red, uh, you know, a, a dark brown red with no imperfections, no gray hairs. You've got to have a perfect animal that you sacrifice. You create the ashes and then the ashes are used to purify the priest before you can kickstart the sacrificial system. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus. So the hunt is on to find a red heifer uh, in order that it can be killed for the ashes. And in Newsweek in 1992, there was a picture of Melody. Melody was a red heifer. She was born at a farm near Haifa, the Kafar Hisidim Kibbutz. It's a ultra-Orthodox kibbutz. And uh, to great acclaim, uh, they believed that at long last, after 2,000 years, a red heifer had been born in the land. She could be sacrificed, burnt, her ashes used to sprinkle um, uh, for the temple. And uh, they all went up to Haifa to look at this animal, inspect her, and unfortunately they found some grey hairs on her udder and on her tail, and therefore she was herself ritually impure, so she probably ended up as hamburgers. But there are uh, Christian groups, Jewish groups, who are trying to breed a perfect red heifer. So if you see a red heifer on the front page of Time magazine, you know the end is near. It's very difficult to take this stuff seriously. They take it very seriously. You do a Google search on red heifer <laughs> and you will find everything you need to know about how to start Temple Mount Sacrifices.